Hey, hi, and hello everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for another edition of the Why You Know Review, where I talk about a bunch of records, gauntlet style, that I haven't had the time to review formally in full over the past few months or so. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of records I'm catching up with on this one, but uh, yeah, everything I talk about is listed down below so you can check it out for yourself. And uh, let's get on with the opinions. Ba bam! We have the Japanese experimental metal outfit Psy coming through uh, with what seems to be their most dynamic and progressive record yet, maybe most versatile too. Uh, many fans calling it a masterpiece. And while I do think the band is genuinely one of the most out there in metal music hailing from Japan, uh, there was something about this record that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, even if I was going into it uh, with a lot of high hopes, given that uh, the band, you know, does tend to be very left field. I mean, why? While I think the drums are super solid on this record, the riffs are really strong as well, the guitar harmonies too, I found a lot of the uh, international fusions of, of various music styles along with uh, some of the operatic vocals and the constantly throaty screams on this thing to be more grating and obnoxious than enjoyable. I think that uh, the album isn't maybe nearly as out there as I hoped it would be. It comes off more gaudy and tasteless than anything and is maybe just a little sloppily slapped together, especially when you are, uh, you know, considering the various genre fusions uh, going on here. But yeah, sadly not as crazy about it as I hoped I would be. French post-hardcore outfit Birds in Row come through with uh, one of the most celebrated and beloved rock albums of the year, one that I was really excited to try given I've enjoyed some of the band's previous stuff, and I'm usually a pretty big post-hardcore fan. However, in this instance, I sort of failed to see what exactly the band brings to this genre. It's not exactly a new spin on things with this LP. And on top of it, I didn't even really feel like um, they were doing the genre much of a service either uh, outside of the performances on this thing being pretty ferocious. Outside of that, the riffs, the drums, the uh, vocals as well. Everything was super standard, super boilerplate uh, to the point where I just don't see how this record stands out in the field of uh, uh, not just good contemporary releases, uh, but, uh, you know, growing classics over the years as well. So I don't know. I'm just kind of at a loss on this one. It's not bad, but it's not great either. Finally getting around to this new Matmos album. Sorry it took me so long. Um, if, if there's anything to note about Matmos's music, uh, them being one of the most interesting and experimental music duos uh, of all time, uh, it's that uh, the source material, the stuff they are sampling, uh, the stuff they're working from on their records tends to be a pretty big uh, decider, a make or break type of thing when it uh, comes to how you know great or intriguing a given project from Matmos is. In in this instance, the duo was working off a lot of sample material from the early electronic works of composer Bogoslav Schaefer. And while this record does have its tense and twittering and very dense highlights here and there, I just didn't find um, the progressions and sound palettes on this record to be all that interesting. Um, I, I, I really don't know. You know, there, there are just some Matmos records that uh, seemingly have a genius idea or concept at their core, and it leads to nothing but uh, fire and some of the most interesting and weird compositions and uh, tracks that I've ever heard them put together, like in the instance of their uh, previous album, uh, which was very long and very collaborative and very heady. Uh, in the course of this one, it just doesn't really feel like as immense as an experience, and I feel like I've heard them pull together similar compositions and beats uh, before j just with different sample material. So while you do have uh, some of those classical and early electronic aesthetics uh, here and there popping up, I still kind of felt like uh, this record was missing something in terms of like, you know, novelty uh, as to how Matmos assembles their tracks generally. But yeah, while I think it was a worthwhile outing and in terms of concept and source material, it's it's certainly different uh, than anything Matmos has, has done so far, but in terms of like the way it sounds and, and practice and execution, uh, I, I think something was uh, really missing on this one. It, it needed something else. 
Cakes the Killer is back with a brand new LP. And while this one is on the short side and it has a sort of choppy track list with a lot of interludes, uh, plus I wish some tracks on this thing went harder. Having said all that, I still will say this thing is a very smooth, entrancing, and nocturnal hip house release with some legit bops on it and some really good flows. I often hear a lot of people talking about the genre of hip house saying uh, that it's making a comeback or they wish it would make a comeback. Here we have Cakes the Killer making some good stuff in this lane. If this is at all of interest to you as far as, you know, musical style, so on and so forth, uh, give it a listen. Don't miss out on this one. Hear it out. New record from singer-songwriter Bill Callahan, and in a word, this one to me just kind of felt passable. But in the grander scheme of things, I suppose a so-so Bill Callahan album is better than a lot of what you will find out there in the singer-songwriter field. However, I am beginning to think that uh, Bill's somewhat stiff and husky voice and repetitive song structures could use a little bit of retooling. I think he's uh, pulled just about everything, at least at this point, uh, out of this well that he can. And frankly, I thought the riskier approaches he took on Shepard in a sheepskin vest a few years ago uh, made that record a lot more engaging, even if it wasn't the most consistent album in Bill's discography. But uh, I will say this, reality is at least better uh, than Gold Record that dropped a little while ago, so I suppose there's that. Legendary UK prog rock outfit Porcupine Tree is back, their first album since 2009, which dropped to a relatively low level of fanfare, which I was pretty surprised about considering how passionate their fan base usually is. I saw very little in the way of demands to review this record, and now that I've finally sunk my teeth into it, I, I can kind of see why. While the production is great, uh, the well-engineered Floydisms on the song Dignity, for example, are somewhat impressive. More rocking passages as well on songs such as Herd Culling uh, hit hard too. Still, it does feel like the band is either getting their footing again or just merely going through the motions on this project. By no means is this thing a disappointing return, but it's not a surprising or triumphant one either. For whatever reason, even with it being as many years as it's been since the last record, uh, it feels like the stakes creatively were much higher on nearly all of Steven Wilson, frontman Steven Wilson's uh, recent solo LPs even uh, the future bites, which a lot of fans reacted pretty negatively to. But yeah, it really feels like the band is coloring by numbers on this one and not doing anything all that uh, intriguing. Some decent performances and songs here and there, though. We have a new project here from underground house producer DJ Sabrina. And yes, it is another helping of endless sample heavy grooves, though she has taken a slightly different approach this time around as some of her uh, most recent and beloved works uh, tend to be albums with very lengthy, very just gigantic, massive uh, run times and track lists. Bewitched pairs things down to just 13 songs and 90 minutes, which for DJ Sabrina is pretty cut and dry to the point. However, it's not really the length of the project overall that was uh, daunting for me, but the songs themselves, while I think a lot of these cuts do start off very strong progressively as they move on, they get um, unflatteringly cluttered with one sample after the next and uh, not a whole lot translates through the noise while I do hear you know whiffs of good ideas uh, here and there through the haze they often feel kind of drowned out by maybe three or four or five other things going on at once if uh, there could be more dynamics and progression and clarity to these tracks I could see myself enjoying them a lot more but uh, as is I think this thing as it drags along uh, tends to lose flavor Dream pop singer-songwriter Nicole Dollenganger comes through with a brand new LP, and there are a lot of words I could use uh, when describing this record. Uh, delicate, beautiful, enchanting, atmospheric, pretty, dainty, haunting, but one-dimensional is also a term I would use to describe this record as well. While the aesthetics on this LP are very distinct and instantly recognizable, they don't really vary all that much from one end of the record to the next, uh, the vocals as well. And sadly, that does wear on me after a while, even if at first I do find what uh, Nicole does here on this record to be somewhat magical. So yes, a pretty album, but an album that uh, is sadly a little one note. 
the new Beth's record that came out last year that I did get a lot of requests to review, but I just didn't really get around to it because I, I just didn't really know what to add as far as thoughts on this project, because I do think it is uh, in one breath, some of the most boilerplate indie I've heard in 2022, but, but, but it's still well written, well produced, well performed. I would say as an overall experience uh, and sound it doesn't really stick with me mostly because of uh, uh, everything it is just so similar to but the singles are really strong there is a good rhythm section on the record the guitars uh, bring a lot of energy to the table and the vocals are uh, pretty sweet too if you're an indie fiend you should absolutely positively listen to this record and uh, first and foremost but if you're looking for something that's reinventing the wheel this may not be for you this is the new breakout album from singer, producer, songwriter, rapper, content creator, Jakey, aka Nakey Jakey. He has been diving more into the music side of his career as of late. And I mean, it's been paying off in terms of the attention he's been getting uh, through this project and also the fact that he just completed an entire album here, even if it is a little on the short side. But with this being a debut, a starting point of sorts, of course, um, it does have its limitations. It does have things that... I think need work. I can commend the production and production choices on this record. Uh, the beats are consistently creative and moody and texturally lush. But I think the bars on this LP uh, tend to be the weakest link over and over and over on these tracks, uh, especially on melodramatic cuts such as Drive Off a Bridge or some of the more unrelatable bars tossed out on like Totally Freak Me Out, which also features one of the clunkiest choruses on the entire LP. I think the passion is there. I cannot deny that. Uh, Jakey is quite compelling uh, on the mic when it comes to, you know, delivery and just kind of plugging into something emotionally potent here uh, when he is performing, but I think there are some kinks in his songcraft that still need to be worked out. Swedish sister singing songwriting duo first aid kit. They are back with their fifth full length LP. And over the years, they've always been a duo to sort of stick to what works for them. Passionate, dramatic indie folk with production that uh, seemingly gets grander with every release. And I also think that's the case for Palomino, though I do kind of miss the rawness and intimacy of some of their previous LPs. Yes, their vocals and incredible harmonies uh, still remain a major asset to their style and sound. The instrumentals, in my opinion, are getting blander and blander with each release, uh, more average as well. Uh, a lot of the songs on this thing didn't really stick out to me, and I feel like uh, the, the duo is... is kind of, I think, losing grip of something as they trend further and further into like this ritzy Americana aesthetic uh, that they have been indulging in, not just on this record, but their previous one as well. To me, I think an urgency has been lost as they've trended in that direction, and I'm just not really sure uh, how or if they're going to get it back at some point in the future. <laughs> This is the newest LP for Secretly Canadian from producer, multi-instrumentalist, and songwriter Namdi, whose profile has been steadily growing uh, pretty nicely over the past 10 years or so. And if there's a single word I could use to sum up uh, this artist, it is range. Not just in terms of emotions uh, with the wit, the sadness, the anxiety, and humor showcased on some of this record's highlights, but also genre range as well, because you're going to hear everything on this album album uh, from indie rock to electronics to math rock to hip hop. Now, I think the overall experience of the record is a little choppy. It's inconsistent. Sometimes the vocals and genre clashes get a bit zany. Maybe this thing is quirky to a fault, but I don't want to be famous. And a handful of other songs on this project are true blue bops. And even if I'm not crazy about this record myself, I can at least recommend uh, this album to anybody who who's looking for an artist who's really marching to the beat of their own drum. That is Namdi. Songwriter, singer, content creator Matt Watson has come through with a new album over here, following up his 2020 Ouch EP. And as of late musically, he has been heading into more of a serious direction with his craft, trending away from some of the, uh, you know, jokier, more tongue-in-cheek comedy rap songs he has uh, had spread on the internet prior. With Ouch and this release, we are getting uh, more of a, a bedroom pop, synth pop thing with some tinges of hip-hop here and there. The EP uh, a few years ago was very rough around the edges 
changes. I think this album, uh, while not perfect, is a pretty noticeable improvement on all fronts. Uh, performances, songwriting, production, instrumentation, making for a pretty solid listening experience overall. There are genuinely catchy alt-pop bops on this thing, such as uh, Work It Out. Moments where I think Matt shows flashes of lyrical genius as well, such as Wacky. And we also have a super loud, immense, emotionally potent closer on the record as well uh, that I think shows him to be someone worth taking seriously, somebody who can really like, you know, deliver uh, something that's going to get you in your feels on a record. Someone who's not just, you know, in it for a joke. But yeah, overall, this record was pretty interesting. And, you know, as far as uh, uh, the current spread of YouTubers suddenly deciding to make music goes, uh, <laughs> you know, my, my money is on Matt uh, coming out with something uh, uh, pretty good, you know, legitimately good, commercially good uh, in the next several years. Dead Cross, the Mike Patton-led punk supergroup, is back with their second full-length LP. They had a pretty interesting debut in 2017, and on this record, uh, we again have a bunch of advanced, eccentric musicians trying their hand at uh, uh, some very aggressive and explosive loud rock. However, I think this project trends in much more of a metal direction than a punk direction this time around. And in doing that, I think Dead Cross has lost a little bit of its direction, its plot, its narrative, its flavor in many respects. Uh, this doesn't really sound too much unlike any other uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek, wild, and uh, you know, a, a little out there patent metal record that you could hear from any number of other bands that he has uh, worked with over the years. Like, if you're a patent fanatic, I think this is definitely worthless and something you need to listen to. But you know, uh, when it comes to uh, metal music and especially punk music uh, overall, I just don't really see what Dead Cross is uh, bringing onto in terms of uh, you know heat or unique dynamic sound what have you. Zishin, have you given any of these albums a listen? Did you love them? Did you hate them? What would you rate them? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another... Uh, an over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, why you no review? Forever.